Hi guys, welcome once again to a Gazlab's teeny tiny video. Um, yesterday I was actually listening to um, Callum and on his live stream. Um, I had a, I, I didn't stay till the very end, unfortunately, but um, I, I went as far as I could. I was absolutely uh, cream crackered. So, um, but anyway, I heard that he mentioned uh, that bit where he mentioned. Uh, um, the Kiwi SDR. Well, it just so happens that um, I've done quite a lot on the on the Kiwi over the last or probably two or three years, and in fact, it was one of the little things that um, I really wanted to get into the store um, when I first went full time. And um, it was a really neat little project. Um, it was good fun to sort of do, and that the one that. Uh, that you know the one I have here is actually seen quite a lot of abuse over the years um, it's had uh, it's been experimented on and uh, all sorts of things we tried all the different um, softwares and stuff as they come along um, and this evening um, I just dug it out of the uh, out of the box and I thought well I'll, what I'll do is I'll try and hook it up and show you the process of getting it to work um, it's not, um, I won't say it's straightforward, but it's a very logical sort of step-by-step -step sort of process and the software's improved so, so much, um, I have to say. Um, when you get them, okay, let me put you over to the webcam, if I can do that. Um, let me get rid of my notes. Um, right, okay, so this here is the actual um, Kiwi itself. Um, and you can see that all it is is a daughter board um, on the top here. So you've got um, here, that's the actual um, Kiwi itself. And then underneath here, you've actually got a BeagleBone um, uh, SBC or small board computer. Um, when you buy these, they come with a with a um, with an SD card on, in a little box. Um, and that's there for recovery and you want to keep that safe okay now when you get it okay the first thing that people do is they push it into this into the uh, SD card slot and when they turn it on it goes into some kind of weird loop um, and then what they do they get everyone gets themselves into a bit of a pickle and can't get it to work um, best bit of advice I can give you okay is when you get the actual um, device open the box up take the SD card um, get everything out and put the SD card back in the box and then put the box and SD card somewhere safe. You're not going to need the um, the SD card unless you really run into trouble. Now, these are pre-installed, okay? Um, now, what I'll do, actually, is I'll mention, first of all, um, you're also going to need a power supply, okay? Now, on mine, I've actually, I've modified an, um, a Raspberry Pi 3 power supply. Um, and what that um, what that initially does is it gives enough current. Okay, these will draw approximately two two and a half amps when they're under a bit of load. So you really want to get a good quality sort of power supply in there. So I use the Raspberry Pi three power supply. Um, I have modified it. I cut the end off the um, the Raspberry Pi the um, basically the USB port and I put um, a, a five millimeter two point one. Um, DC connector on there. Um, the other thing to remember is um, you're going to need an Ethernet cable. Now I've just got a standard meter long Ethernet cable and that plugs in your router. And you might need to go a little bit longer if we see if your antenna is sort of somewhere else or if you've just got a standard receive active antenna um, that is located elsewhere. You're going to need to get it to wherever it's got to go. The other thing they, they do is they fit here, they fit a, sorry, it's all out of, out of first shot. Um, but the other thing they do is here, they fit um, as a GPS antenna. Now they provide the GPS antenna with it. Um, and yeah, so that that, uh, that that comes with it. And as I say, it's you don't have to use it if you don't want to. Some people don't want to broadcast their, their location. However, 
Um, if you want to participate in the um, is it TDMA um, sort of stuff or the direction finding, which Callum was talking about um, yesterday, and it actually looks really good fun, you're going to need to enable the GPS because it needs that GPS to actually get a good fix on the receiver and then do the calculations where whatever might be coming from. Then also here you've actually got a um, antenna grounding um, point as well, um, and this is used to sort of bond and, and link everything all up to, to the antenna ground. And obviously here this is your HF antenna. Now these actually go from pretty much zero right the way up to 30, um, 30 megs. Um, just um, in my notes, I did make here some notes. Um, um, right, okay. Um, right, it has 30, 30 megs of instantaneous bandwidth. Now that's actually split up into, um, I think on the new version of the software, um, which I will show you um, in a moment. Uh, let's put this back over to GoPro. Um, the on the new version of the, the the software or the later versions of the software you can you can select how you want that to go so you might want more receivers you might want um, more bandwidth or you might want a bit more audio um, bandwidth so you can listen to some of the high def um, sort of things um, or the high def sort of audio channels um, and that restricts the usable channels down to sort of three or you can actually go the standard configuration is four um, sort of shareable sort of channels so these are really really versatile good fun um, items and um, yeah so let's, let's have a little look um, how you can actually get these up and running um, and then I mean because initially they're very very easy it's it's so easy you just plug and play um, providing you don't put that SD card in you've got a good quality power supply five volts very important five volts two or three amps um, and providing you don't put that SD card in you can just plug this in now the first thing I will say to you is it might it might be updating for a little while so when you plug it in it might take an hour or two to update so just plug it in let it do its thing if you can't access to it it will come if you can't access it it will come up and say the software has been updated or something along those lines just walk away leave it whatever you do don't do as I did this evening because I got a bit stuck. I turned, I thought I'll leave it for an hour and I, I flicked the, the power off and um, corrupt the, uh, the thing. I had to do it all from scratch. So I had to download the, uh, the rescue image and do it all, all from scratch. But it's not a drama, okay? It's very, very easy to do. Um, just take your time. It, it's a couple of cups of tea, basically, sort of problem, not, not a huge one. So just when you get it, turn it on, let it do its updates, walk away and leave it for a couple of hours. So let's, let's now have a look at the software. Okay, so we've arrived at the web page um, here that you've logged into. And if you use these, these details here, I'll put them up on the screen as well. Um, that's kiwistr.local um, colon 8073 forward slash admin will bring you to this page. Now initially you're not going to need a password. So you will need to change that in, in, in a moment. Well, the first page it's going to bring you to um, is the status page. Um, now this status just gives you some idea of what's going on. Um, it's tell you it tells you how it's configured. Um, and whether or not it's configured to, to, for GPS tracking um, and, and tells you all that sort of stuff and it gives you some idea of the data and stuff that's going out. It will also give you whether or not there are any users on, the, on each of your receivers, which we'll look at in a minute. Now the next step is the mode. Now this is what I was saying to you earlier on. Nowadays with the new um, updates with the software, you can actually set out so you can set it as four actual receivers or you can actually set it as it looks like two receivers there um, and, and these are like audio res, um, receivers so I think this is saying that this is audio and graphic so you can have these two with waterfall and then you can have just two uh, sorry you can have one two three four five six six just audio only um, and that's what it looks like to me anyway so um, so yeah, that, that's, uh, that's another way you can set it up. Or you can set it up with better audio, much wider bandwidth audio, but only have three graphic um, 
sort of receivers. Now there is some um, detail about this last one where it's actually pretty much in beta. Um, they're actually looking at, uh, at updating it and they may bring that down to two if it doesn't work as, as they hope. But again, there's quite a lot of information in this bottom section and I would urge you to go and have a look at the, um, the instructions online and on the wiki and all that sort of stuff. Control. Now this gives you a page of bits and pieces where you can start the Kiwi SDR um, server, you can reboot the Beagle board um, and you can power the Beagle board off. You can kick the users um, if you've got if you want to clear um, everyone off if people have been hanging around on it too long. You can enable um, user connections, yes or no, so you can actually set it so they can't, um, and you can also set it um, so that only you know one, two, three, or four users can actually um, connect to it at any one time. Um, sometimes it's well worth doing a daily restart and you can set this at a daily restart and you just give it a time and it will just uh, reset the, the whole thing. And you can, if you've got problem with, say if you're on a mobile network or something like that um, and you want to save a little bit of uh, bandwidth, um, you can turn the waterfalls on and off. Um, you can also set it um, uh, you can actually set it to uh, for you know for not to allow multiple connections from one IP address and all that sort of stuff, and you can set it up. Um, they can put in a password to override any time limits that you've set. So this is a page where you've got a lot of control, um, and you know. So moving on to the next one. Now this one here is the the page that you're interested in if you want to share this outside. Now, um, I've not done um, this set this at the moment, and it's showing my outside IP address, which I've covered for so because I don't want people knowing that willy nilly. Um, but you can actually set this up um, in such a way where you use something like no IP, um, which will give you an, uh, like a, a public IP address, which is not necessarily associated with you. Um, but it links through to your own IP address so that it kind of, for all intents and purposes, you know, they can go to a, a website address or something like that and basically get access to your Kiwi. Um, and the, what we want to do um, is essentially we want to be able to connect no IP um, and that all that sort of configuration with something like sdr.hu. They give you a streaming key which you'll need um, to keep and then um, I think it's pretty much every 30 days you've got to do some renewal um, sort of stuff so um, you know keep that number safe and yeah so every 30 days no IP will want to, to renew unless of course you pay for it. Okay now this um, this page here gives you the config of the, the actual device itself um, to start with um, and what you would do, you can set this up, it will give the initial frequency it starts, it will give the initial waterfall um, sort, of, um, sort of settings. Um, it will, you can set up the um, frequency scale offsets, the, you can calibrate the S meter, that sort of stuff. You can, you can configure it so that it starts off in LSB, USB, FM, AM, whatever you want. Um, and then you can set the um, initial waterfall max and the waterfall minimum, I would have said, but um, yeah, anyway. But you can also do uh, things like um, a CW offset, zoom, the initial zoom. You can set the maximum frequency um, and you can actually set um, the, the S meter as well. They're a little bit different. And you can set um, some channel spacings there. You can set waterfall calibration and set LED brightness and all that sort of stuff. Um, what else can we do? Um, you can clone um, the config and all that sort of stuff all from this page. Um, and yeah, so there's a few other things. I would read the instructions. The web page, right now then, this is the information that um, is displayed to the public. Um, you can actually do all this sort of stuff. So when they go to sdr.hu, they see all this sort of stuff. Um, or they go to your, if someone logs into your Kiwi, they actually, this is what they see. Um, 
and this is also you set the location and all that sort of stuff of the device so that it all starts sort of uh, hopping and popping. Um, what else? This is where you set up the grid square. You set up your admin email, and um, that's not a real ad, uh, email, by the way, before you email it. Um, you can set up here the, the the name of the the device that you want to call it or whatever you want. Um, and this again, this is where you you need the SDR.hu API key. Um, that sort of streaming key I was suggesting that you need. So if you've got it all up and done and um, and it's all ready to roll, then you just need that key, get it in there and you should be up and running. Um, it's a bit of a learning curve and it did take me a little while. Um, I say like I didn't want to intend this, I didn't intend this video to be an instructional because it's, it's quite a lot to it and um, I've already done quite a lot of that sort of stuff and there's plenty of information on, on YouTube about the no IP stuff as well. Um, okay, now this one here is it looks like it's a, a, a page under under uh, development. Next one is um, do you want to update your software? Now, like I said before, it does take a while. Um, I accidentally switched mine off midway and it didn't do it any favours. Um, so you can check for updates. You can do all the sort of stuff and yeah, you can do software builds and all sorts of things all from this. I would leave this alone, to be honest, unless you're just doing check update. Back up. You can put a blank SD card into the BeagleBone um, and then you can um, click right to it. But once it's done it, you need to get the card out before you do a restart. Otherwise, it will reflash all the all this firmware. Network. Um, this sets your external ports. Um, this could checks whether or not the port's open. Um, again, um, it gives you the MAC address and the, the serial number and all that sort of stuff. Um, and it gives, you can set up like blocked addresses and do all that sort of stuff. And you can then do a restart as well. Um, GPS, um, I turned all mine off at the moment. I'm not going to use it at the moment. Um, I will turn it back on at a later date, but uh, not right at the moment. This has got a log. Um, here gives you quite a lot of information um, in there so yeah that's quite handy um, and this will give you the uh, BeagleBone Debian um, or Debian uh, console so you can actually maybe install some uh, applications behind the scenes again quite advanced this is extensions um, so you can do all sorts of things in here um, fax and FSK and all that sort of stuff and you can set all this malarkey up um, if you want to and here is the most important page probably of all this is where you set up your um, your passwords and all that sort of stuff so um, and it's you can set up this so that um, before anyone can jump on your device they need a password um, that's entirely up to you how you do that but something like SDRHU doesn't need that sort of stuff um, so you can actually set how many users require a password um, I would always make sure that you protect your admin um, side of things at the very least uh, and put a nice long password in there and um, as you can see that is not a password that um, that I will use in the future but you know I like passwords like that very very good easy to remember but hard to bust right and that pretty much sums up the setup so let's have a little look at the device running Okay, to get this a running, what we need to do is we need to shorten the address down to uh, kiwisdr.local colon 8073. And once we actually put enter on that, it should then take us into a lovely little window like so. Um, and we quite simply click on the play button. And as you can see, this is a very, very busy display. Now, let me get me. Um, 
Sorry about that. Let me just get me out of the way and put me over in this corner. In fact, before I do that, let me show you this. This normally will fly out when you first set this up, okay? Um, and you can just click on that little arrow and get rid of it. So let me put me over in this corner. Now then, um, I think we can see this quite clearly, which is good. Um, first thing I'm going to show you is the amount of bandwidth that this thing actually gives you. Um, and it's actually really quite staggering. Um, it will give you approximately 30, 30 megs. Um, but you can actually see where my, my antenna is, is, is actually hot. Now, there is also a... There you go, spectrum scope across the top as well, which is quite nice. Um, here you can see each of the bands or the traps on my antenna, which I've never really seen it quite like that before. But uh, there you go. That uh, that is a um, out there. I'm using a high gain DX88, so just a vertical antenna, very basic. It's not a cheap antenna, I don't think, but um, it seems to work quite well, and it's not too noisy, unlike me. Right, now then, so let's have a quick, uh, quick gander at what all the stuff does. So let me just mute the, uh, the audio, and I've used the mute button down here. Um, there is a bit of a lag with these things, because obviously it's all web-based and stuff. There might be a little bit of a lag. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in just a little bit, and we'll, we'll go to, say, one of, the, one of the bands. And what we'll do is we'll tune up to... There you go, so seven, about seven sort of megs. In fact, actually, we can select here from this drop down bar, we can select 41 megs, and that will take us up to about here. Okay, and what we can do is if I can get that to go to the little shape I want. Yeah, come on, where are you going to go? This is a bit of fiddly, actually. This is the worst thing about it. It uh, sometimes it doesn't want to do what you want it to do. Well, there's one way to do it. I want it to turn into the little cross, but it won't do it. I don't know why. Oh, there you go. Um, I'm having a bit of trouble here. It's a bit sticky. Bear with while I just get this sorted out. Um, oh, it's being a bit of a beggar. Oh, there you go. Fine, drag it, drag it across the top. Um, like I said, this is a bit, um, because it's actually web-based, it's a bit, or, you know, sort of, sort of like web or browser software-based, it can be a little bit laggy and just a little bit annoying at times. Um, but what we've got here is quite a good, a good receiver. But do give it a chance to tune you know, to or to settle. And so let me see we can but the other thing you can do with it as well, you can click and pounce. Um, it does take a you've got to aim at the centre of the signal to get it somewhere near. Works an absolute treat. Now, just let me just uh, mute him for a second. Let me give you some idea of what this thing actually does. This um, sort of menu box here has got all the sort of stuff that you, you're going to need in it. You can actually, like I did before, you can select the band that you want to go to. And you can select an extension here. You can get a CW decoder, DRM, fax, FSK, you name it, it's there. Um, and that's the TDOA, and I called it TDMA earlier. I'm sorry about that. It's not quite right. It's TDOA. Um, and that will give you the, the direction finding malarkey. I think it's that one. Um, worth a little experiment with. Um, I think it's all in beta and uh, early days with it at the moment. Let me know you get on in the comments. That would be really good. Um, obviously got Whisper and all that sort of stuff. Now, um, here you've actually got the way that the, 
I've just clicked on something and uh, made it go all red, but that's okay. But you can see here that you've got a lot of control over the um, over the waterfall. Um, and what we can do is we can turn all that down. Okay, now I like mine fairly sort of um, dark. Okay, with um, with highlights. Um, because I can sort of um, I find it easier to see sort of like weak signals just dotted around in there you can just see here that it's very difficult to see down here but um, you can see the weak signals just just pipping through the darkness and in there as well you can just see that so for me that works um, better for me what else you got um, WF7 I don't know what that is a oh, waterfall um, menu audio you can set up um, it's actually got some uh, noise filtering as well which is absolutely crackers for sort of something like this um, and it works quite well so let me see if I can get sort of something um, on here so let's try and let's see what we do and I've not not played with this before. So we can get a good signal. There's a few out there. really interesting it goes very quiet ah. right, so. let's see if we can get to as I say it is a little bit a little bit fiddly it's just got a little bit of a lag which is a bit um, a bit annoying It's worth a little. Yeah, it's, it's worth a little play with some of that sort of stuff, and um, yeah, have a little play. Um, AGC, you can you got some adjustments on there on AGC, and then you got some stats, and it will give you quite a lot of information on there as well, and um, gives you all of the um, the uh, data rates and um, frame rates and all that sort of stuff um, different modes um, you've got all those sort of things across the top IQ mode and um, and well whatever else you want narrowband FM anything you want it's all there um, again it, this is sort of one of those things that's really worthwhile just having a, just a, a real sort of fiddle through and play with and um, I just wanted you to see it obviously Callum DX Commander mentioned this uh, yesterday um, I realized I had one in in the box and um, I thought you know what if um, I'll get it out get it set up and uh, what I'll do is I'll do it I'll, I'll set it up tomorrow evening and if you guys want to access it you're more than welcome I'll put the um, I'll put the address and everything on the in the description tomorrow um, and then you can go and have a little play and, and try one out. Um, just, um, you know, for me, obviously, you know, I'm loaned a lot of these things from, from Martin Lynch and Sons. You know, without their support, obviously, I wouldn't be able to show you quite a lot of this sort of stuff. And um, so a huge thank you to, to them. And what I'll do is I'll put a link... Um, below in the description to the link of the product on their web page so you can get it i don't get anything out of it but it, it just other than they don't mind uh, lending me the stuff so that's really really cool um, and i'm always really into that so thanks again um by all means um you you know you can support me by using my affiliate links and stuff below it doesn't cost you anything um but they do give me a small commission um if you buy something off of amazon and that sort of stuff so, um, you know, feel free to go shopping and start your search on my description and affiliate links. 
anyway that being said thank you very very much for watching i hope that you've enjoyed this um and i've not been too boring so please um let me know how you're getting on with yours um let me know how you're finding the stu sdr.hu website whether or not you're enjoying it whether or not it's any use to you um, and that sort of stuff so thanks for watching see you soon